Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss budgetary accounting. Budgetary accounting is found in governmental accounting, governmental for state and local government. First, let's make sure we know what is a budget. What is a budget? A budget is a roadmap, is a plan for inflows and outflows of financial resources. To keep it simple, let's call financial resources cash. So a budget is what do you expect to receive in cash? What do you expect to spend in cash? And hopefully, what do you what do you like? You like to have more inflows than outflows. What is the purpose of a budget? Well, it's used to record budgetary inflows. What is budgetary? It means what you plan. Plan is a roadmap. Plan and budgetary outflows. And remember, when you are planning, those are estimated amount or amount that are authorized in the annual budget. So the government, what they do, whether it's a state, local government, they plan ahead. They prepare a budget and they estimate how much they are go going to be generating in inflows of cash as well as outflows. Think of the budget as a future income statement. Income statement in quote. So you're looking at how much you're going to be bringing, how much you're going to be spending. Now, budget is the cornerstone for governmental accounting. Why? Budget is a form of compliance because how do you hold the government accountable through a budget they tell you how they how they are going to raise money this is revenue then they will tell you what are the expense expenses or expenditure and the difference is basically the increase in the fund balance so they have to tell you this up front it has to be visible so you can you can do what you can hold them accountable so if they promise something put it in a budget and let's see what's going to happen Matter of fact, the budget for governmental accounting is included in the general ledger. How is that possible? Well, it is included in the general ledger, but it's not included, not in financial statements. But how is that possible? You'll see what are we going to do. But it's included in the general ledger because we want to make sure the government is taking it seriously, but it's not in the financial statement. So the inclusion of the budgetary accounts and the financial ledger ensure transparency and visibility, visibility to the citizens, allowing for effective monitoring and control of the government expenditure. However, budget do not appear on the financial statements. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The first thing we want to learn about budget is the elements or account of budgetary accounting. So the budget itself, they have their own accounts. Let's make sure we are comfortable, we understand these accounts. First, we have an account called estimated revenue. Well, what's estimated? How much we are planning to raise in revenue. This represents the projected amount of revenue to be raised, to be received during the budget period, assuming a year. Now, this account estimated revenue is a debit balance. So estimated revenue, hold on a second. How can be estimated revenue? Isn't that a revenue account and revenues are credit? No, this is not revenue. This is a budgetary account. It's called estimated revenue. It has a debit balance. Make a note of this. We close at the end. We close at the end of the period. Make sure we'll make a note of this and we'll see it later. So this is the first budgetary account. Another budgetary account is called estimated other financing sources. What is that? Accounts reflecting anticipated inflows other than revenue. Now we're going to talk about revenue a lot. How? What is considered revenue for the government? For example, taxes. However, other, other financing sources could be bonds. When the government borrow money, that's a bond, bond proceeds. That's a lot. 
what we know as a liability. We also close this at the end of the period because this is an estimated amount. Estimated means it's a budgeted amount. We also have estimated other finances, financing uses. So notice we have sources and we have uses. Reflecting anticipated outflow, negative amount of money other than operational spending, other than what we spent to run the business. For example, bond payments. Again, estimated accounts are budgetary account. We close them at the end of the year. Now, the estimated other financing sources, it also have a debit balance, just like estimated revenue. Estimated other financing uses, it has a credit balance. Although it sounds like an expense, but it's the opposite. Now, to make this even further clear, I want you to, to remind you that we have financial statement accounts, which are revenues. Revenues are revenues. Those are increase in fund balances when closed. Revenues increase the fund balance when closed. This is a revenue account. A revenue will have a credit balance. Now remember, revenues and other financing sources are both recognized un under the modified accrual basis when measurable and available to pay. We learn about this during the current obligation and the increase fund balances. Just like revenue increases equity, fund balance is the equity for government. Also, we have expenditure and other financing uses. Those are not these accounts on this page. The reason I, I want you to see them is to let you know estimated revenue is different than revenue. Estimated other financing uses is different than other financing uses. Estimated other financing sources is different than other financing sources. Expenditure decreased fund balance, just like expenses reduces equity. And both of these accounts are recognized on the modified accrual basis. It means when incurred, if the expected to be repaid from the currently available resources. And as we mentioned, those decrease the fund balances. So again, I showed you some budgetary account and I switched to regular accounts. I'm going to go back to budgetary accounts. An appropriation. What is an appropriation? It's the maximum amount of expenditure that an entity are authorized to spend. So at the beginning of the period, when the government meets, they would say, this is how much we expect to have in revenue. And this is how much we expect to have in appropriation, in expenditure. How much are we going to spend? It's the legal amount. It's the legal authorization granted by the legislative body to incur liabilities for this purpose. Simply put, do not go over this. So this is how much they're appropriated. For example, estimated revenue could be 5 million and appropriation will be 4.5 million. What does that mean? It means we expect to receive, raise 5 million in revenues and we estimate to spend 4.5 million. How do we know this? It's the appropriation amount. Then we have an account called encumbrance. So we're going to look at this account a few times. Make sure you understand this. Encumbrance is an estimated amount recorded for purchase order, contract, or other expected expenditure chargeable to an appropriation. So we're going to have another account called encumbrance that we have to deal with. And what's this account? Once we know, once we know we are going to make a purchase, let's assume we place a purchase order, we sign the contract. When we place a purchase order, we don't have a liability yet. We just placed the order. We did not receive the goods. Nevertheless, once we place the order, we have to encumber this account. Encumber means kind of restrict this account, take it out of circulation. It means don't touch this amount because this amount is encumbered. So let's assume we estimated 4.5 million worth of expenditure. Then we purchased something for 2 million. Okay, whatever that thing is. Okay. We have not purchased yet, but we placed the order to purchase. Well, it means we encumbered the, the, the 2 million. What does that mean? It means if we appropriated 4.5, we encumbered, we decided to spend 2 million. What's left is 2.5 million, 2.5 million. So encumbrance is basically kind of restricting. It's a control mechanism to prevent overspending. Once we say this amount is encumbered, it reduces appropriation. It means that's it. Don't touch this amount use what's remaining. An entry is made for encumbrance when the purchase order, sign contract, or a commitment is made. Notice, as soon as you make a commitment or you sign a contract, you did not even receive the goods yet. You encumbered the account. Obviously, we're going to look at journal entries. The entry reduces the budget available for expenditure. Once an amount is encumbered, well, you can no longer spend it because it reduces your budget for expenditure. So simply put, we're going to take the appropriation, how much you plan to 
spend, how much are you allowed to spend, minus any encumbrances, minus any actual expenditure that you made, and what's left will be funds available to be spent. So you could have started with, let's go back to 5 million, uh, 4.5 million, and how much the county can spend or the state. Then they encumbered 2 million. Then they actually spent a million on other things. So now there are 3, 3 million out of the 4.5. What's left is 1.5 million of funds available to be spent. Funds available. Funds available. Any outstanding encumbrances are reported in the notes of the financial statement. What does that mean? Encumbrances, remember, we restricted them, but we did not make the expenditure yet. We did not purchase. We did not pay for them. Well, we have to report them in the financial statements that we have encumbrances. And encumbrances affect the budgets only. They affect the budget, and, and they have to have a valid appropriation. So they have to have a valid appropriation. It means they're coming from something that we appropriated. It means it was in the budget. So simply put, we have appropriated amount, encumbrance, expen expenditure. Then we eventually disperse the money, pay it in cash after we, you know, we have to pay it. Eventually, we have to pay the amount that we encumbered. It doesn't have to be the same amount. For example, maybe we purchased something for $10,000. We only received 8000 worth of goods. We don't pay the 10000 We pay the 8000 but we have to close the 10000 You will see how we do this in a moment. Basis of accounting. Which basis of accounting do we use for budgetary accounting? Now, here's the good news. Neither GASB nor FASB have control over budgeting principle. And obviously, this is a governmental accounting. We follow GASB. But they don't tell you. Budgeting principles are directly set by the government or organization that supervises them. Just basically, they decide which method they want to use. Although GASB recommend modified accrual basis, most government use the cash basis. Why the cash basis? Well, it's easier for people to understand the citizens. Those are the people who is going to hold you accountable. And think about it. People are used to the cash basis. We pay our bills in cash. Now, is there any weaknesses to the cash method? Sure. But sometimes the difference between modified accrual and cash, we assume it's not material. Now, we're going to start to learn how to record a budget. Now, we learn about what's a budget, as estimating revenues, estimating appropriation. Let's start to record the budget. So first, we estimate revenue. And remember, we estimate revenue by a debit. Then eventually, we are going to start to realize the revenue. So we estimate to raise taxes, then we actually raise the taxes. So if we estimated 5 million, we, we collected 4.8 million. What's left need to be recognized, still recognize 200,000 in revenue to be recognized. For appropriation, we take appropriation minus what we actually spent and what's left is balance available for expenditure. Obviously, appropriation minus what? Minus also encumbrances here. Encumbrances minus actual expenditure and what's left is available. So let me show you, for example, this is what a general ledger would look like so you understand how the budgetary accounts work. If we're looking at this general ledger for revenue, real property taxes, they estimated 1.5 million. Notice it's an estimated revenue. It has a debit balance. This is estimated revenue and they estimated 15 million then at some point they collected 2.3 well when they collect 2.3 it's going to increase their actual revenue of 2.3 million then what's left to be collected 12.7 then they collected 1 million 1.1 million again what's left to be collected 11.6 then they actually collected actual collection, which is credit 500,000. What's left is 11,100,000 because they collected another 500,000. Now, eventually, what's going to happen to this estimated revenue? What did I tell you about this 5 million? This will have to be closed to zero, and we're going to see that later. Let's take a look at recording expenditure. Remember, funds available equal to budget, which is appropriation minus encumbrances minus the actual what's funds available let's take a look at an example this is again a general ledger for an expenditure account crime laboratory well we have assigned three hundred thousand dollar for this crime laboratory so this is the unencumbered balance unencumbered means still available then we spend 
$50,000. This is actual expenditure. We purchase something for, or we spend some money, maybe employee salary, $50,000. What's unencumbered left is two fifty. dollars Then we encumbered another thirty. dollars We went from two fifty dollars to two twenty. dollars the unencumbered balance. Then we encumbered $15,000. Then we paid, uh, have an expenditure of $40,000. Maybe we paid it, maybe we have not. It doesn't matter. Then we reduced the two twenty dollars by... 55 and the unencumbered amount is 165 so what I'm trying to show you is we appropriate an amount then we start to incur expenditure encumber those balances and what's left is unencumbered and remember the 300,000 what happened to it at the end it's go down to zero this always go down to zero let's take a look at a journal entry to see how this all work a city government incorporate its budget and its accounting system and encumbered all commitment. Prior to the start of the year, they adopted a budget in which the city revenue is estimated to be half a million and expenditure of 450. Let's record the entries. We debit estimated revenue, 500,000. We credit appropriation, 450. Remember, this is a, those are two budgetary account. Hold on a second. It has to have a, you know, we have to have total debits equal total credits the difference is fund balance 500,000 increase what are we saying what what is the city government saying it's saying that we are planning to raise 500,000 in taxes we would like to spend only 450 and overall overall the government will be better off $50,000 more now how do they come up with this well they will meet the people you can you elected as the city council that's what they do. They set the budget. For example, they will set a budget like this. They 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 plan to raise taxes of 300, license and permit 50, intergovernmental revenue 50, charges for services 50, fines and forfeits 50, miscellaneous revenue 25. This is where the 500 coming from. So this is the estimated revenue. Then they want to spend 120 on the general government, public safety, police, firework 150, public works for roads 100,000. Cultural and recreation, library, parks, 80,000, total of 450. This is the 450 for the appropriation. And they would like to stick with that if they can. You know, this doesn't usually happen. The government usually spend more money than they plan, but this is the plan. I'm going to say this one more time. Those are budgeted amount. And what do we need to do with those budget amount? We closed, we closed them at the end of the year. So these amount are reversed. What, what does reverse mean? It means we are going to debit appropriation at the end of the year 450 we're going to credit estimated revenue 500,000 and we are going to debit fund balance 450 we reverse them budgetary account are reversed let's talk about encumbrances a little bit more i know we covered them but let's talk about them a little bit more this is 15,000 of encumbrance what does this 15,000 represent this crime laboratory as of this date, right here, they have 220000 of unencumbered balance that they can spend for whatever they want to. Let's assume they ordered something, a machine, a blood test machine for 15000 Well, they encumbered this amount. It prevents from someone else spending this money. So once they decide we're going to buy a machine or whatever they want to buy, it prevents overspending the budget. It's a control mechanism. An entry is... This entry to record encumbrance is made when the purchase order issues, a contract is signed, or a commitment is made. I know I'm repeating myself because you need to know how encumbrance work, how encumbrances work, how, how this account work. Entry that record encumbrance reduce the budget available for expenditure. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's worth it. Outstanding encumbrances are reported at the end of the year. So by the end of the year, if they did not receive this machine, they will mention it in the notes. Let's look at an example. City clerk office ordered a copier for $2,000 on January 2nd. They made an order. What do they debit? They debit an account called encumbrances, and they will credit an account called reserve for encumbrances. So they, they placed an order. They wanted to buy this machine. They have not bought it yet. All what they did is they maybe you know order it online, talk to the salespeople. That's all. However, once you do that, you would remove two thousand from the appropriation amount, so no one will, no one will use this money. It's no longer available for use. So encumbrance, what you're you're doing is you are reducing the, in quote, equity of the government. Yeah, government don't have equity; they have a fund balance. 
and you are increasing reserve for encumbrance. It's like basically the net effect is zero, but you reduced appropriation. Let's take a look at this example. Chester County incorporates its budget in its accounting system and encumbers all purchase order. Prior to the start of the year, the governing body estimated revenue to be 5,600, expenditure 5,550. That was what was appropriated. Let's go ahead and journalize this entry. Estimated revenue, 5,600. Appropriation, 5,550. What's the difference? They're going to have, you know, an extra $50. They're going to increase their fund balance. This is a budgetary account, budget. What do we do with this, with this account? We're going to close them. And you're going to see this journal entry later at the end of the year. Let's keep going. During the year, the county collected 5,800 in fees, grants, taxes, and other revenues. How much did they plan to collect? 5,600. How is that possible? Well, they were lucky. They were able to collect more in taxes, fees, and grants. They debit cash, credit revenue. But they collected more. Why not? Why not? The county ordered services for 3,000. Notice they ordered. They did not receive anything yet. For that, they're going to encumber. They're going to encumber 3,000 and they will credit reserve for encumbrances. I don't know, they ordered some machinery for the county. So far, so good. Now, during the year, the company received and paid 2,800 of goods and services that has been previously encumbered. Remember, they encumbered 3,000. Of that amount, they received only 2,800, and they expect to receive the remaining 200 the following year. In other words, the 200 remaining that they planned it's going to still be outstanding. Well, we're going to debit expenditure 2,800, credit cash 2,800. We're not done yet. We're going to have to reverse 2,800 of encumbrances and reverse encumbrances for 2,800. So what is this entry? This entry to eliminate this entry. Remember, this entry is basically what we said in this entry. We're putting away 3,000 for goods and services. Don't touch it. We received of that amount 2,800. Once we pay the cash and we record this goods and services expenditure, well, we're going to reduce our appropriation, but we have to back out the 3,000. Well, we can't back out the whole thing because we, still, we expect to receive an additional 200. Therefore, we debit reserve for encumbrances and re reverse encumbrances 200. Simply put, we still have 200 of encumbrances and reserve of encumbrances outstanding. In other words, now, these balances, 200 now, because we took out 2,800. And they're outstanding. It means we still expect to receive the goods next year. Then the county incurred 2,800 and other expenditure for the goods and services it has not yet encumbered. So they paid 2,500 maybe for salaries of their employees, something that they did not encumber. They have to pay immediately. So you will debit expenditure. They fall under expenditure. They credit cash 2,500. Let's take a look at the closing entries to see how we close the budgeted accounts. First, let's close estimated revenue of 5,600. This is, this was, deb this, these accounts were debited and these were credit. So how do you close estimated revenue? We credit. If we debited estimated revenue, we are going to credit estimated revenue to take it out, 5,600. Now we had revenue of 5,800. Remember, we collected in taxes 5,800. So simply put, we had the regular revenue account and it has in there 5,800. Now we close it, 5,800. This account went down to zero. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means from a revenue perspective, our fund balance should go up by $200. We credit fund balance $200. That's great. We thought we're only gonna credit the fund balance 50 overall. Now there's an additional 50. So if we're keeping track of the fund balance, we started at, you know, in it, we estimated at a, a 50 increase. Now we have an additional 200 from what? From the revenue. Let's take a look at the appropriation. Appropriation is what we expected to spend, 5,550. 5, Let's close that. We're going to debit appropriation 5,550. Now, what did we spend? What was the expenditure amount? The expenditure were... 5,300. How did we come up with this 5,300? If we go back to the prior slides, we had two expenditure, one with 2,800 and another expenditure for 2,500. 
now we have to close expenditures are what are uh, expenditure or expenses and they we close them at the end of the year therefore we are going to credit them against appropriation five thousand uh, five thousand three hundred now we also had encumbrances if you remember the encumbrances we encumbered we encumbered 300 right we encumbered 300 no not 300 we encumbered 3000 but we only spent we only spent we used up 2800 and what we said we said the remaining it's still outstanding therefore the encumbered we encumbered 3000 we actually received 2800 what's left is 200 we have to also to close this encumbrance account we're going to credit the encumbrances 200 bring this account down to zero now what happened is this we we plan 5550 expenditure and encumbrances together what we actually incur in expenditure and what we plan in additional expenditure that is still outstanding 200 we're left is we're $50 or we are $50 better off so that's another increase to our fund balance from what from a lower $50 expenditure now this 50 and this 50 are two different ones the first 50 is the result of estimated revenue minus minus appropriation estimated revenue minus appropriation this $50 is because we did what we spent less money now the fund balance is 50 plus uh, 50 starting with 50 plus 200 plus 50 is 300 and if you really think about it for a moment this should be the your in quote net income or the increase in fund balance how so because if i generated five thousand eight hundred in actual revenue and i incur an, an expenditure five thousand three hundred i'm gonna be a minus then i i still have an encumbrance of 200 which is overall 5500 what's left is 300 overall this period i am better off 300 which is kind of it's this number here if you want to look at it that way so the 300 increase in the fund in the fund balance overall is the result of revenues minus expenditure minus encumbrances because we are still going to be incurring those encumbrances therefore there was an increase in fund balance of 300 which is a similar the same thing as net income let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat lectures when recording the budget for the general fund the journal entry would always include what would always include what it would always include a debit to estimated revenue control account would it always include that I would have to say yes we do debit estimated revenue are you sure it's a revenue account it's not revenue it's estimated revenue remember when we prepare the budget we debit estimated revenue for an amount credit appropriation and the difference is a fund balance so when we have more estimated revenue then the difference is a fund balance so yes do we always credit estimated revenue no in the in the budgetary this is when we close when we close it we credit estimated revenue this is at the end we close the the estimated revenue we credit estimated revenue do we always debit appropriation control no we always credit when we are recording the budget yes we do debit but when we close the budget a debit to budgetary fund balance not at all we could debit the budgetary fund balance or we can credit now in this example i said we credited the budgetary we credited the budgetary balance because we have more estimated revenue greater than appropriation if estimated revenue was less than appropriation guess what the difference will be a debit to budgetary fund balance what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs resources that's going to help you whether you are taking governmental accounting studying for the cpa exam invest in yourself the cpa exam your accounting career is worth it it's a 20 30 40 year investment in your career good luck study hard and of course stay safe